I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. Sure, I'll start. Okay. Uh, today, I'm. This one is I took mind map. I took uh, when I uh, Craig Rauman uh, did the, the keynote. So he he talked about scaling background and how may so, sorry and meaning of customer collaboration. So competitive game to. Uh, Priorative game and more, 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 less, 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 using those uh, pictures and large scale framework like this. So, mind mapping is just a uh, note taking technique, uh, radiantly growing uh, picture to keep one, uh, keep your ideas in, in one big shape. Okay? <laughs> I won't t t tell you that right now, but I, I, I didn't think it was a good joke, though. So. <laughs> yeah, and I'll I'll show you when. Oh, others, like this one. Uh, this one is the I wrote uh, about it's the uh, design pattern. In order to remember those patterns, uh, we use shapes, colors, and things like that, so that you write hand brain works well with the left hand one and others uh, okay this is a plan of a project Christmas uh, I don't know if you have Christmas in this country okay sorry <laughs> let's say we have five branches like when what why who where result this framework is called 5w1r do you know that framework? <coughs> yes, one R. Yeah, this framework is uh, I took from uh, Buzan's book, uh, Tony Buzan's book called uh, Mind Mapping for Kids. It's interesting because result is very business oriented framework, but um, not how, but result. <laughs> it's very uh, funny. When, what? Uh, we are going to do retrospective, we are going to do keep problem try retrospective, and, and after that we'll do party, and why we're going to do that, and who is attending the party, where to do that, and the result we expect is customer satisfaction, build a win-win, and those things like that. So keeping things in one picture and uh, using shapes. Uh, as you know, right hand of your brain is very good at colors, shapes, music, and uh, smells and things. Very, uh, your sense, your sense. And left hand is very good at logics and uh, orders. So right hand of your brain working parallel uh, signal processing to your brain, and you are one of the uh, world at a time. And left hand orders it to make a logic. So Using mind map, you can work, you work with your brains well. So I'm going to show you one example of how you use mind mapping. <clears throat> okay, uh, city uh, library. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for my design. Uh, meeting minute. I'm gonna do this. Okay. Uh, what I usually use mind mapping when we use I when I we use this uh, in uh, meeting, uh, we take memo notes uh, using this projectors with the team and the this is a mind mapping or for my meeting notes. So it has time and place and attendees. And conclusions part is not filled yet. To do is not filled yet. And agenda is going to be here. So um, when you start the uh, meeting, you can add items while you speak and uh, collecting ideas and discussion uh, like this. So that uh, everybody can be on the same page. And you can sometimes do add icons here, 
when you like topic 17, you, you add this icon. Or at 16, you can uh, add, add this cloud. Or if you have some items, 70, 17 is very similar to topic 7, you can add those uh, links and something like that. Because this is a tree structure, as you see, you can, sorry, uh, you can drag and drop. I just copy that tree and I uh, paste it into Excel. What do you think it happened? It's like this. So when you see this, it's a tree structure because so you can have the center and time and place, attendee, conclusion, to do, and agenda as a memo. So this can work as a uh, instant uh, note uh, for your for, for the meeting. And I'll show you another example. This is a, sorry, some part is in Japanese, but this is a uh, uh, illities or software qualities in six categories and other subcategories. It, it looks like a tree, right? So if you copy this and, and I'll go into another mind map and I will say a software uh, quality and uh, I'll paste, paste this uh, the qualities into this one uh, where's the paste edit paste do you know what happens it's like this it's it's very natural way of uh, treating tree trees in in mind mapping you can move around those trees if you think the security thing is not a functionality and it should be maintain maintainability, you can just drag and drop this uh, branch into here, which which is you cannot which you cannot do in Excel. The tree structure is so uh, it's like uh, works for me as a whiteboard. You can uh, drag and drop your concepts and making groups and things like that. Okay, one last demo I would do if I have time. Who's next? Okay, okay, just just one demo. Um, <clears throat> what what I'm going to do is to keep using in agile, agile project. Uh, uh, you, you use you writing UML is not very often. So what I'm, I'm do is writing a mind map, and you can drag and drop into use cases or classes or other concept diagrams. Uh, okay, I'll do this in this Christmas project, but I'm not sure. Okay, so you can use a, I will use this uh, use, use case diagram. You can dis drag and drop uh, anything, actually anything from, okay, I can drag and drop who into, sorry, this is a class diagram. I will make an, a use case diagram. So that I can drag and drop this development team here as a actor, like this. And sorry. And uh, retrospective, this one here, drag and drop as use case. And they make a use case diagram. And those things here, development team members, is, has a link to backwards link to this uh, mind mapping so that you can tr trace your ideas between classes or UM diagrams and mind mapping. Oh, I'm, a, I'm running out of time, so that's it. Thank you very much. If you are interested in my tool, please uh, contact me uh, or pass me uh, uh, your business cards or something. Anything is okay. Thank you very much. Uh, a deployment pipeline is because that's what Go, our agile release management tool from ThoughtWorks Studios, helps you with. Um, all right. Okay, so I'm sure uh, in every project there's a set of developers who are checking in code. What you desire is that uh, all this code should be continuously integrated, run your unit tests, acceptance tests, at the end of it, give you packages which you can easily deploy. So um, 
Go is a tool which helps you with that. So that essentially helps you orchestrate a de uh, deployment pipeline. What a deployment pipeline is essentially uh, this diagram. This quickly tells you that. So there's a commit stage where you can compile your code, run unit tests, create build installers. Then acceptance test sa stage, which runs your uh, user acceptance tests, functional tests. Now as soon as this is passed, uh, you want to test out your uh, product, right? So you can uh, simultaneously uh, deploy to two environments, one for UAT, one for performance testing, do all your testing there. And once you are completely confident that uh, this is a passing, you can deploy it onto prod, uh, production. So this is your uh, basic deployment pipeline. So in this case, what happens, it, it increases confidence in your uh, production readiness. So as soon as my these two uh, stages are green, I am confident that I can uh, deploy to production. And it also gives continuous feedback, right? So at this point, if something fails, I can immediately fix it here, run my pipeline again, and so on. So it's very fast uh, feedback for everybody on the team, not only developers, your testers, managers, uh, ops people, everybody immediately can see what is going on in my whole uh, life cycle. So that's what Go helps you do. Yeah, like I said, fast automated feedback on production readiness of your applications. Whether you change your code or whether you change your configuration or your infrastructure, anything changes in your whole system, it will immediately show you what is going on. So I think I might have less time for demo. If I, all right. Okay, so yeah, so reliable releases, you, know, you can make this whole process repeatable. I can click a button for any version of code and it will give me my uh, installers immediately and be able to deploy immediately to production. Also, operation gets tools to enable reliable frequent releases. Yeah, that's essentially the same. It simplif uh, simplifies release management to a very uh, high level because you have total visibility to the status of the application. At any point of time, I know exactly what version of my uh, project is deployed onto a say QA environment or my staging environment or production environment. I have complete control over the system because you can either make it automated or manual as you require. And end to end traceable, traceability, if something breaks, I know what check-in actually broke this test, who checked in, at what time and so on. So especially for distributed teams, this is really useful. Uh, and a faster feedback for deployment. Okay, yeah. So I will just take you through the demo now. Okay. So I won't be actually all right, so I need to change the resolution. Okay. Yeah, so this is a typical uh, dashboard uh, on Go. So you can see that uh, you have uh, different pipelines. This is essentially called a pipeline, a management build. It has three different stages. So there's a compile stage, a unit test stage, and a packet stage. So we know that all the three have gone green. You can click on changes. You can see, okay, uh, Git is the version control being used. Uh, a guy called Pavan checked in. This was the comment, and this was the Git sha when the check-in was made, and so on. Gives you all the details. Uh, now, whenever a new check-in goes in to this uh, version control, immediately this pipeline is going to get triggered. If I have time, I can show you uh, how that happens. The pipeline will get triggered. Uh, all the stages will run. And immediately you have packages at the end of the pipeline. If something fails, it will become red. The stage would be red instead of green. So if I click here, oh man, okay. I need to change the resolution, doesn't go right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when I clicked on a stage, I go to the stages history. On the right hand side, I can see all the different runs of the stage. That will show you when it had uh, failed, when it had passed. Uh, you can see the status of every job. You can, so every stage has a set of jobs which can run parallelly. So as an example, suppose I have a package state, uh, sorry, package stage. In this stage, I want to parallelly create uh, installers for Linux as well as Windows, as well as Mac OS and so on. So I can have three separate jobs which will parallelly create the packages for you. So jobs help, help you do that parallelly. And essentially, yeah, you, uh, once you're playing around with this, you can see a lot of uh, information which this tab gives you. It gives you 
what are the check-ins which, which were made. Uh, it also shows you what are the tests which had failed. So, I can go to another setup of mine and show you. Um, so, for example, this unit test stage, it had failed a particular time. When I go on to that stage and go to the tests, I can see that there were total number of failures was one, uh, errors was one and a test called A and B is what failed. One had an error, one had a failure and this actually shows you the failed build history. That is, if the same test had run uh, uh, and failed a few stages before this, it will actually show you the history down there that okay, it uh, failed in say uh, version 5 it also failed in version 3. So, it will actually show you the history and who had checked in when the failures had happened and what are the check in and so on. Now, here you will notice that everywhere this complete visibility to anybody who like if I go to the dashboard, anybody seeing this is going to come to know that okay, when this particular version had gone in, there was a green pipeline, all the tests had passed, uh, it is good to go to production. Right. Uh, now, uh, you can also create dependencies here. So, suppose I go to, um, I can, yeah. So, here you will see, right. So, this management build pipeline, there is also a, an integration pipeline which depends on this build pipeline. So, when this went green, uh, this had, uh, the next pipeline had run, it had gone green. So, this bookstore integration pipeline depends on the management build pipeline. Uh, you also have a feature called uh, trigger with options. This is if I click on this, it shows you a list of all the previous check ins which had gone in. So, you do not always necessarily have to build only with your latest version. So, you have the flexibility to build with any previous version. So, if suddenly, if suppose you have deployed your latest version to production and you need to roll back, you can go and select any previous version and trigger your pipeline again, it will roll it back to the previous version. So, I can select whichever one I want here and uh, trigger the pipeline. Okay. I can also, um, this is a very unique feature in Go is, uh, I can compare uh, the changes which were made in two different uh, runs of my pipeline. So, if I click on compare here. Right. So, I can see that between version 5 and version 6, this was a new check in which had gone in. So, suppose I uh, deployed my uh, product to production say a week earlier and I deploy again today, I can see the differences between today and the week before and see that okay, exactly these three features have wa uh, has is what has gone in to, uh, into production. This is very easier for uh, managers uh, etcetera to track. Right. So, this feature helps a lot not only the developers, but everybody on your uh, team. Okay, I think that is the salient features of Go. If you need uh, more information around this, you can come to our booth. We are giving away uh, trial versions of uh, the product and you can uh, install it, play around with it and see how it helps you achieve CD. Uh, along with this, I would also like to show you Yeah, so uh, basically, a lot of um, uh, customers are using Go for um, uh, continuous delivery. So, I just wanted to quote a few customers who have recently spoken about Go in conferences and also blogged about it. So, uh, the CTO of Amazon.com uh, recently uh, mentioned that a customer is using Go over AWS and how they are uh, achieving uh, continuous delivery. Ancestry.com is also another product, uh, sorry, um, a customer of ours uh, who actually use uses Go with Chef and with Windows. So, like you might think that uh, maybe uh, Go cannot be used with Chef or Puppet, but it can very easily be used with that. Uh, and he says that, yeah, you just have to click the magic play button and any version gets deployed. And yeah, a couple of more uh, talks about uh, around continuous delivery by customers who, who use Go. You will also find blogs about people using the product uh, on the internet. So, yeah, they basically help you. Oh, okay. I am sorry. Uh, all right. So, yeah.
Yeah, so I hope you will use the product for continuous delivery in your projects and you have come to us for any more information. Thank you.